In the past couple of days, something happened in Austin that 10 years ago would have sounded like science fiction. Multiple Teslas were spotted driving with no one inside them, no driver, no safety operator, no one in the passenger seat. And then Elon Musk confirmed it. Tesla is now testing fully driverless vehicles on public roads in Austin, Texas. This is a big deal, and of course there are risks. Let's take a look. Before we start, a quick shout out to my channel sponsor, Joa. They make the best accessories for your Tesla and other EVs, and they have amazing warranties and customer service too. I use their accessories daily. Check out the link in the description and get 5% off a fan-cooled phone charger, a portable tire inflator, a fold-out lap table, and so much more. Oh, and they make perfect gifts for your EV-loving friends too. So check out the link, save 5% on a great gift for someone else or for you, and now let's get back to it. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. So first of all, I want to start with credit where credit is due. 420 Bounty Hunter, good name by the way, managed to take a video of a driverless Tesla driving around in Austin. So turn off the sound because it's not particularly useful. It's just driving, but you can clearly see nobody is in the driver's seat and it looks like nobody's in the rear seats either. So this car is driving along on its own. This was reposted by Sawyer Merritt and then got a ton of views. You can see 3 million views at this point. So it's gone pretty viral in the past 24 hours or so, and obviously well worth it because this is a really big deal. And in case you want more confirmation, we have Elon responding, testing is underway with no occupants in the car. We also have Ashok Eliswamy saying, and so it begins. And we even have the official RoboTaxi account right down here saying, leaving the nest. So clearly this isn't speculative or rumor, this is actually happening. One question was, and you can't quite see it here from the video, unfortunately, is whether this car actually is labeled RoboTaxi or not. I will take a wild guess that it's not labeled RoboTaxi because I think that would draw too much attention to it. It's probably just labeled as a regular Tesla. In other words, it doesn't have the words RoboTaxi across the bottom right. It's just below where we would be able to see right here. It'd be down here in this area. You'd be able to see it labeled RoboTaxi. My thinking is since they're testing this on the QT, basically, that they're probably not advertising it's a RoboTaxi right now. It probably just looks like a standard Tesla, but I could be wrong. If someone actually has a picture or video of the full car, that would be really useful to find out. But I will speculate in the meantime that it does doesn't have RoboTaxi on it. And then just to be complete, we have an electric article from Fred Lambert, who is, he used to be very positive Tesla, and now he's not so positive Tesla anymore. We'll get back to this article when I get to the risks section. I think that they're overblown in this article, but you know, there are obviously always risks when you move on to another level of autonomy. There were obviously risks back on June 22nd when Tesla released the RoboTaxi into the wild in Austin with a safety monitor in the right passenger seat. And obviously those risks go up if you don't have safety monitors in the car anymore because you're fleet monitoring at that point. So anyway, let's not be naive about this. There are risks, but I think in this article, they are well overblown. All right. So with that being said, let's examine why this is such a big deal. So first of all, obviously this is not a demo track and this is not a closed course. This is on public roads. And that is the biggest deal, of course, at this point. Now, have we had any paying customers actually use this? As far as I know, no, but by today that could be out of date and maybe somebody is paying for it. But I would guess we're probably looking at a week or two of testing prior to letting a customer ride in the vehicle. So over the past few days, and then obviously caught on video yesterday, there have been observations of Model Ys driving around in Austin with no safety monitors, with nobody in the car at all. So they're driving around completely empty. And this is a big deal because it means that they are on their own, navigating real streets, interacting with traffic, making turns, obeying signals, obeying the law, all of that kind of stuff with nobody else in the car. So obviously this is a major statement of confidence from Tesla, and we don't know for sure, but again, I will speculate here that they have been in contact with NHTSA and with Texas's Department of Motor Vehicles or whatever they call it. Sometimes it's not DMV, but anyway, the equivalent of that in Texas and shown them enough data that they have gotten regulatory approval to do what Waymo already does, which is to have driverless vehicles. So again, in this case, Tesla is not breaking any new ground. They're following in Waymo's footsteps. But I assume when Waymo went from having safety monitors to no safety monitors in their vehicles, that they had to present something to NHTSA and to the Texas DMV to prove that the cars were safe enough to put them on streets. And this is actually an important point because one of the complaints that Fred Lambert had was that there's no safety data out there. And obviously, I will admit that that is true for us consumers. There's not a lot of granular data 
that Tesla has presented to the public, but that does not mean they haven't presented it to the correct regulatory bodies. And those regulatory bodies have examined it and approved the use of the cars without anybody in the vehicle. And obviously this trial period where no one at all is in the car is useful for Tesla itself to gather data, but then also useful for the regulators to see that data and to give maybe another approval. Maybe they don't have to, I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, Tesla can share that data with these regulatory bodies and then say like, hey, it's still very, very safe. We haven't had any incidents in, you know, X thousands of miles or something like that. And then those bodies may say, okay, you can now start to charge customers for rides in those vehicles. Also of importance here, this is from December 4th, so about 11 days ago as I record this, Tesla owners of Silicon Valley reported that Tesla RoboTaxi fleet just hit 151 vehicles, 122 in the Bay Area, that is a very, very large area, so that makes sense, and 29 in Austin. And that means that between December 3rd and 4th or so, they added 10 new vehicles in a single day, and Tesla may have added another 10 or 15 or 20 in the 11 days since then. Anyway, at the time, as reported by Tesla owner Silicon Valley, they had 550,000 and change total miles driven, 93% hourly availability in Austin. In other words, it was available 93% of the time when it was supposed to be. I would assume the other times would be due to some sort of major event or especially some sort of major weather event when the vehicles would not be driving. And the fleet is still growing fast. And of course, they report that Elon said Austin would double next month and it looks like the ramp is already underway. The 2026 unsupervised launch is starting to feel very real. The age of the driverless fleet is coming one batch of 10 at a time. And obviously we can build on top of that with actually testing cars in Austin without safety monitors. And then there are reports, and again, this is somewhat speculation that by the end of the month, which is 16 days from now, there's going to be expansion targeted for Phoenix, San Francisco, Miami, Las Vegas, Dallas, and Houston. Unfortunately, I don't see Atlanta in that group, but that is the list of cities that supposedly will have robo taxis in them by the end of the year. That seems an incredibly aggressive timeline, I would be pretty satisfied if they hit that by the six month mark by like June of 2026. But we will see maybe Tesla has big plans for Christmas presents for all the folks that live in those cities. So anyway, you can see that Tesla is looking to expand their market very, very rapidly. They're increasing the number of vehicles in the markets they're already in. And they're looking to expand the number of markets very, very quickly. And of course, most importantly, in Austin, they're getting rid of the safety monitor. So first of all, what is the big deal? And second of all, why is this not available in California at this point? So the big deal part of it is we're moving from individual monitoring where the person in the vehicle can stop the car and potentially get out and drive the car if necessary. They're, they're right on site. They're in the car. They can take over if need be. They're moving from that to fleet level management, which means that the car, of course, could be remotely stopped, assuming that there is cell coverage and things like that, which could go out. There could be a problem. If you're looking at a critical decision that needs to be made in milliseconds or something, obviously fleet level software is not going to do that. You can't depend on going up into the cloud, having a decision being made and sending the information back to the car in you know less than a second or two. Obviously, it could happen faster than that, but you can't guarantee that. And when it comes to safety critical stuff, that means that the car itself is responsible for that. The fleet management software could potentially get it out of a bad situation. Let's say it drives into an alley and for some reason it can't get out. Somebody remotely could joystick the car and drive it back out of that alley and put it back on the street or something, but they can't take over in a timely enough manner to deal with safety critical stuff. So Tesla must be very, very confident of their software or else they wouldn't be getting rid of these safety monitors at this point. So that is the big reason why this is such a big deal. So by doing this, Tesla is implicitly saying that these cars are at least as safe as human drivers and probably significantly more safe than human drivers without a human in the vehicle to intervene under any safety critical circumstances. And that is a huge, huge statement from the company. That is a really, really big deal. And as a driver of 14.2 in both my Cybertruck and in my Tesla Model Y, I can say that the car at this point it sometimes goes too slow or too fast or something like that for given circumstances and stuff. But the safety critical stuff is pretty much gone. I really don't have to worry about that anymore. And so I can see a more advanced version of this tuned for Austin specifically should be able to drive much more safely than the common average human driver. Now, why do we have safety monitors in California still? Well, the likelihood is that it's a regulatory thing. California has a lot more regulations than a state like Texas. And there's also the fact that the vehicles only got into California in August, I believe, or maybe it was late July. But anyway, 
anyway, there's a significantly shorter period of time than the cars have been available in Austin. So there's probably less data that's been collected. But on the other hand, there's more vehicles in California driving around than there are in Austin. So the data collection might be more or less the same. So I think that the really big part of all of this is that California has much more stringent regulations. And so Texas is a place that they can get approval more easily. And therefore, we're doing it in Texas first. And so when we get to the risks, let's turn back to the electric article. And of course, I will leave a link to all of these in the description. You can see Fred says here, Tesla has to date never released comprehensive, verifiable data proving that its FSD system is safer than a human driver. We get anecdotal evidence, curated video clips, and high-level statistics about miles driven, but not the granular disengagement data that competitors like Waymo provide to regulators and the public. So Fred is correct that we don't have granular data and Waymo does produce more granular data to the public, but they're not 100% transparent with us. They do curate that data to a large extent that they give out to the public, but we're the public and Tesla has no real responsibility about reporting to us. They do, on the other hand, have a responsibility to report to regulators. And so I think Fred is overstating the point here when he says Tesla is not giving this data to regulators. I would highly doubt that. I think that regulators really do want to see this data and they have asked for it and Tesla has shared it with them. So of course, this is speculation, but I would say the odds are very, very high that Tesla has given the regulators everything that they have asked for. And then we get to some actual data here that shows that there was a crash every 62,000 miles. Unfortunately, Fred just links to his own article here from November 7th, so about a month ago, which said that within the first month of operation in July, Tesla reported three crashes with its robotaxi service. And then this is a link to yet another electric article. <laughs> so you just keep going on and on and on. It's like a nested doll thing. But so that works out to about once every 62,000 miles. But notice that this is in the first month of operation in July. And here that's buried because it says there's an accident every 62,000 miles. Well, that was one month and it was the first month of operation. Assuredly, there have been a lot of software and logistical upgrades to make the vehicle safer over the period of time since July. We've got August, September, October, November. We've got four full months that Tesla has been working on this and they don't sit still. They have a very, very rapid iteration. So again, it's speculation because we don't have the actual data, but the likelihood is that that crash rate has gone down from every 62,000 miles to probably something much, much higher, like hundreds of thousands of miles, even close to a million miles, at which point for city streets, it would be demonstrably safer than human drivers. And if Tesla has presented that information to regulators, they would of course say, wow, it's safer than human drivers. Yeah, go ahead and test it and make sure that that is accurate when there's no safety monitor in the car. And then we can release you to actually charge customers for that service. So while yes, there are definitely risks with doing this, with having these cars drive around without a safety monitor, it is a step that Tesla needs to take. And the odds are very, very high that Tesla has taken the necessary steps and pulled in the correct data to prove that the cars are safer than human drivers at this point. So in the end, how do we look at all of this? It is a huge milestone. It's at least as big a milestone as, like I said, June 22nd. And I remember the date because it's my wife's birthday. That's the only reason I remember the exact date. But it's as big a milestone as that first date when we had the robo taxi available for for service and there were safety monitors in the car, it's at least as big a step as that. So we're taking that next step. The next milestone, of course, will be the first paying customers that actually pay to be in a car without a safety monitor. And then the next milestone after that will be when Tesla expands out to these new cities that they have in their sites. And after that, assuming everything goes well, it's all about expanding and expanding and expanding and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and becoming a true juggernaut in the United States and then expanding to other countries. Alrighty, folks, let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Am I making too big of a deal out of this? Am I minimizing the risks? Should we be taking the risks more seriously? I don't personally think so, but you might disagree. And of course, disagree if you feel like it. While you're down there, if you don't mind liking the video, it really helps out with YouTube's algorithm. And if you want to help even more, check that you're subscribed. And if not, consider subscribing because that helps out YouTube's algorithm even more, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.